This is in association, effectively, with Peter Hickman, the road racing ace, fastest rider on the Isle of Man TT. If you look at these bikes in the paddock, they, they really do resemble scaled down BSB or MotoGP machines. Really great bikes for the youngsters to, uh, to enjoy riding. Let's have a look how they lined up because it was very close at the front this morning. Henry McCartney, the fastest rider from Harley McCabe in second. Ruben Bray and Luca Hopkins all separated by less than one second. Wilson Dilks was in fifth. Lake and Payne lining up in sixth position. Arnie Carr, George Bowes, eighth. Zach Weston, ninth. Ralph Croft rounding out the top ten from Daniel Stevenson and Cameron Ancliffe in twelfth place. Jack Newton, thirteenth from Izzy Carter. Charlie Sketchley in fifteenth from Kobe Garrett. Dan Deering. Luca Wilkinson with no time in the morning qualifying will line up at the back but the top four or five riders covered by less than a second this is a one make series sealed engines and so the bikes pretty much identical less than one second covering the top few riders in qualifying now there has been close sometimes this year Jake in terms of qualifying and this looks set to be a closely fought race well yeah the third weekend is no exception to that Harley McCabe only has an eight point swing over Henry McCartney and of course it's the latter that's managed to get the pole position time by only five hundredths of a second so the battle really is raging between these first two bikers on the front row of the starting grid it's going to be really interesting to see how this race plays out now there, there looks like only one bike on the front row. What has happened to Henry McCartney? He's meant to be there in pole position. Where is he? Because his bike is not in position on the front row. It looks like it's only Harley McCabe. It would appear so. Is uh, looking out on the certainly no riders out on the track at the moment. Only purely on the starting grid. So we are losing a couple of positions there. Whether they have hit trouble, I don't know. I mean, uh, see the riders well, all seem to be ready, without yeah, him. All ready to go. Here we go then, and of course, good to see a couple more of the novice riders out there again. Flag drops, and away we go. Good start there from Harley McCabe. Actually, there he is down the inside. Good jump on Ruben Bray. Brave move into that first corner and up towards the top corner. We go Luke Hopkins in there as well on the 41, closely followed by Wilson Dilks. Nice and smooth through Christmas for the first time. Another good start. Everyone seems to have gone away well. And down we go towards Ashbury for the first time. Harley McCabe, great jump on the field, so he did seem to have lined up there and gets away smooth as they make their way through Ashby for the first time. Yeah, there's no Henry McCartney, which is rather unfortunate considering he was the fastest from qualifying, so that's a story to clear up for later on. But yes, McCabe uh, settling in quite nicely on these exquisite Ovali bikes. They really are quite nice to behold, and they are giving us a really nice battle in this 2020 season, the first for uh, the Ovali Cup in the British Mini Bikes. So a good battle there, continuing to rage as they round through the first turn. This is not going to be an easy one for McKay because Bray is giving him plenty of pressure. Yeah, Actually goes slightly faster on the first lap. Bray looking smooth there through oblivion up towards Christmas. Gets a nice exit from the corner. Let's have a look as they go into Christmas corner. Bray down the inside, but can't quite get the apex. Has to back out of that one. We'll tag onto the back of McCabe here as we head down towards Ashby. Bray looks very quick and very threatening down the hill, but not close enough to go for a move. Now, Luca Hopkins in third is only one second adrift, so we'll be trying to keep tabs with these two riders battling for the lead. As again, Bray. Now, Bray looks quicker at the moment, but can't find a way through. Hopkins and Wilson Dilks both look threatening, third and fourth. As Bray, let's see what he does through boots. Nice wide exit into the corner, carrying the speed. And we'll try and get past McCabe on the exit here, I think. Let's have a look around the final corner. Bray all over the back wheel gets a good drive out to the final corner as they cross the line almost identical lap times there but, oh again Bray seems quick out of those final few corners and this is where he's going to try and make the move yeah and this is the difference between the two riders Ruben Bray's already done a race this morning of course or early this afternoon I should say Bray has already had a race in these bikes uh, obviously not in the Ovali Cup but in one of the other classes so he knows the circuit he knows the conditions of each uh, contact patch uh, in the braking zones and when you get back on the throttle where the application is where the bike is going to transfer how the bike is going to feel in terms of the settling nature of the track so he's actually got the advantage here on McCabe McCabe has not had that first opening race whereas uh, Bray is one of the riders here this weekend that's doing two classes so Bray is already right in the hunt here because he knows what to do with the bike and he knows which parts of the car oh, uh, which there. parts of the circuit are going to be tricky now that's the 67 that's, that's come down that's Bose. Bose that's, that's Bose that's on the run down to uh, Ashby by the looks of things Riders right, sat up so let's hope that the race continues we'll keep an eye out on the race control as to what happens but the race goes on in the meantime Harley McCabe and Ruben Bray again very quick on the run up to Christmas corner 
McCabe so far has got the line covered now, I believe there will be some wave yellows here, because this is where the fallen rider is. Still there, I think, but the race goes on. Down the hill they go towards Ashby, and Bray has to fall in line here at the moment because of the yellow flag. Still Luke Hopkins in third place, Ron Wilson Dilks, as we see this fantastic aerial footage, giving us an idea of how things are still quite close at the front. Now we see Bose tumbling down the order off the track at the moment, but the race goes on, doesn't appear to be anything too serious. Bray does seem very quick on the entrance into boot here, trying to carry that speed. Now, of course, the bikes are relatively closely matched with speed here, so it's just a case, I think, of just trying to get the speed on the exit. Yeah, the only difference really between these two is in terms of what they did in qualifying this morning. They both had wet circuits, or I should say damp circuits, to play with this morning. McCabe was three-tenths of a second quicker than Ruben Bray, but Bray has one race experience this weekend over McCabe, so he has a little bit more knowledge of the circuit conditions than McCabe does. Now, McCabe has a tiny bit more raw pace, but Bray has that extra knowledge, so as a result, they're kind of even. They're pushing each other to the limits a little bit. You've got Hopkins there running a very solid race in third position, but he's just not quite able to keep up with the leaders as they continue on their way through. He's still running a very solid race. There's no question of that. Uh, Dilks is there in fourth place. Carr, Payne, Croft, Wilkinson, then Antcliffe and Stevenson having a nice little duel over ninth place. But the two leaders, McCabe and Bray, they're getting very close together. If I'm Luca Hopkins, I'm still keeping this nice and lit because if these two do get together and they do end up impeding each other, there's a very good chance of a subtle, sneaky victory creeping in. I think Hopkins has just gone down the outside of, I think that's Dan Deering actually, one of our novice riders who's still back out there and learning and enjoying the race series. And Deering currently in 15th place. The gap between first and third, just a shade over five seconds. So uh, at the moment, Luke Hopkins not an immediate threat in this race, but certainly if these two start trading paint and getting too close, then you think that Hopkins and Dilts might get involved in this one. At the moment, though, it's a battle between the 179 of Harley McCabe, your race leader, Ruben Bray, in second, just to round out the rest of the top ten. Hopkins third, Wilson Dilks third in fourth. Arnie Carr, Lake and Payne in sixth position. Ralph Croft, Luca Wilkinson, Cameron Atcliffe and Daniel Stevenson rounding up the top ten as they close in on a back mark. And that's the 25 of Kobe Garrett currently in 13th position. Oh, oh it's getting close here though, back marker. The leader got impeded and Bray's surely yeah. going to sweep past them all and he's got there no, to the top. Oh. oh, that was brave there from McCabe <laughs> to commit to that outside line. Now, I think that might have been Newton, I think, just in the wrong place at the wrong time as Bray again has a look down the inside. Oh, but McCabe shuts the door. So the unfortunate Jack Newton there, wrong place at the wrong time, really, just seemed to uh, throw this race wide open. He was so lucky that he didn't get sideswiped by either of them, but Bray knew that that could have been his one and only opportunity to get past, so he kept the feather in. The problem is, having swept around the outside, he found himself in the wrong position to go through Oblivion flat on the throttle, so he had to back out of it just a little bit, a little blip of the throttle, and that's all it took. McCabe was still in the right place for that left-hander, so a very tricky uh, little race battle between these two riders as they continue to fight for the position. McCabe and Bray very evenly matched, and Bray has the extra added confidence of knowing what the circuit is doing uh, compared to McCabe. McCabe is still essentially a bat in headlights at the moment, trying to stay out of trouble while also pushing the limits of the bike. If they get up to another back marker, Bray is going to pounce. Well, this is close now. Again, McCabe surely knows that Bray's there, guarding the inside line into Christmas Corner, nice and quick on the exit. Down they come towards Ashby as George Bowes takes a seat on the edge of the track. Again, it's just a bit too, uh, too close there, but Bray looks quick on the exit here. Just got to try and stay on the rear wheel here as they make their way down towards Boot once again. No real chance to overtake directly unless uh, McCabe is slow into the entrance, but here now Bray, I think, is going to try and get the speed round Boot and try and make the pass on the exit on the run to Christmas Corner, possibly. Bray looks threatening here. Yeah, Ruben Bray has got everything to gain here. McCabe has everything to lose. And Bray's got more knowledge of the circuit conditions here because of his earlier race. He's got a little bit more momentum with him as well because McCabe had that little bit of a moment where he almost lost the lead. Bray is essentially the man doing all of the chasing here so he can afford to take these opportunities. But they've still got four laps to go. So he doesn't want to throw an ugly move onto the inside line in the hope it sticks. He's got to calculate it and time it right. The hardest job for Bray here is essentially to stay coughing up the exhaust fumes of McCabe's bike. He's got to stay that close to him. He's got to be chewing dirt on the way through these apexes. And that's the only way you're going to pounce on him because he has this opportunity to use that momentum to slingshot past him in the apex. And that's where he's going to nail him. But he's got to be patient. 
Luke Hopkins a distant third at the moment with the 85 Wilson Dilks, the two leaders closing on the back markers now. That's uh, down the inside of the slow riders is the 85. That's the fourth place rider, Wilson Dilks, at the moment alone in fourth place, although the 83 Arvani Khan not too far behind. Certainly a bit close, a bit of traffic here on the edge of the top 10. There's the 135 in 11th place as the two leaders thread their way through the riders on the edge of the top 10. And fortunately here for Harley McCabe, it looks like Bray has been bulked slightly by that. I think the number seven, the ninth place. Oh, Cliff, yeah. dear, oh dear. I, nice. think, I think he actually got held up the rider before thinking about it. I think it was mm. Stevenson that initially held him up. And now uh, McCabe is able to utilize that opportunity. And look how close they were at the line. They were only eight hundredths of a second apart of the line. So that suggests to me that Bray was having another crack at McCabe. But essentially, Bray then got balked in behind first Stevenson and then Atcliffe. That's opened up the gap, and that's really made it a difficult situation now for Bray to get back on terms with McCabe. There is Atcliffe, the uh, number seven in ninth place, I believe. That looks like Stevenson close behind. They're having their own battle, of course, on the edge of the top ten with two laps to go. They fall a lap down. So Bray, nice little squaring the turn off there to get past Ancliffe and stay in contention with the leader. Still not much in it as they go down the inside of the 8th place rider, number 76. That is Luca Wilkinson. These two race leaders really are maintaining a good pace at the front. They've lapped well into the top 10 now and may even catch up on the 49 of Ralph Croft. They've already lapped Dan Deering for a second time. So the pace at the front is very quick indeed. Luca Hopkins currently six and a half seconds adrift in third. Let's have a look at Ruben Bray here because it looks like he's starting to close back up on Harley McCabe. Always a lot easier when you're in second place to catch up on the leader. There's McCabe then 179 has led pretty much the entire race. Got a great start but Ruben Bray looks threatening in second place. As we now head on to the last lap so it's now or never for Ruben Bray who continues to close the gap. It's difficult because it's six tenths of a second, which is a good eight or nine bike lengths, and that's a sizable advantage around a circuit like this when you've only got a few hundred meters to play with. So it is going to be difficult for Bray to maintain this, the, well, to keep this uh, fight up to McCabe. Essentially, I think Harley has already got this one uh, nailed to the mast. The reason he's been able to do it is because he's nipped his way through the back markers to the absolute perfection. He made the moves, he kept himself in the advantage point, Essentially, he's just got to guide it round, but he is being a little bit cautious. Bray might be able to sneak this one in the final couple of corners if McCabe isn't concentrating. Well, here we go. Bray now really attacking through into boost at the moment. It looks like Holly McCabe has just about done enough. Bray still pushing hard in second place, but round the final corner goes Holly McCabe. Ruben Bray still battling, but the checkered flag falls to Holly McCabe. Ruben Bray, 52.7 on the final lap, fastest lap of the race by quite some margin. Third position will be the 41 of Luca Hopkins, Wilson Dilks crossing in fourth as Luca Wilkinson goes through, finishing one lap down, but still in eighth position. Daniel Stevenson and Cameron Ancliffe rounding out the top ten. Uh, looks like Dilks there in fourth position, and Arnie Carr will round out the top five. So a very closely fought Ovali Cup first race, some very close racing at the front, and very fast pace lapping all the way through into the top ten. But well-deserved victory for Harley McCabe. Yeah, and a character-building race as well uh, for Ruben Bray because he really had to work hard to stay with Harley McCabe on that one. Uh, Luca Hopkins, a solid third place for him there. But McCabe, that's such an important race victory when you consider that his main rival, Henry McCartney, who had actually outpaced him in qualifying, uh, had actually managed to... He managed to not only beat him off the line, but obviously McCartney wasn't there on the line. So uh, it's a great opportunity for McCabe as he uh, disappears out in front and really nails it to the mast in terms of uh, his performance.